Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page four. Page four of London is Calling, and I, I made this page a little bit different than usual. I used um, this 12 by 12 image, and then I cut a curve into it. And uh, I the curve is based on the location of the moon. So I came across four inches, four inches, and then just did a nice curve. And then this is the second half of um, the 12 by 12. So it's actually a little bit smaller, but um, that's roughly what I did was cut it apart. <clears throat> so again, come over four inches, four inches, put a tick mark, and then just create a curve. And it doesn't matter if it's a perfect curve or not. Um, all you want to do is create that curve, and then when you separate it, you're going to use the, the pieces to trace and create the curve for your um, flaps and pockets. Hopefully that makes sense. So there you go. So just so long as it's one piece split in half. If you don't want to do the curve, then you would just uh, cut a rectangle, <coughs> a right angle here, come down, and then use the rest of the 12 by 12 on on the pocket. So this is a pocket and I started with a six and a half, six and a half, seven, sorry, seven by nine, seven by nine. <clears throat> and I scored and um, added double-sided tape to um, three sides to create a pocket. And then once I did that, I laid this on top, traced it, and then cut out my pocket. So that's it. So we're going to go ahead and install this. I'm going to make sure I've got it going right side up. I'm going to take the stuff out of the pocket on page three. Again, we're on page four. check again. Okay, the, this is going to get installed on the left hand side and it's creating this curved pocket and then we're going to use this and I think it's from it's from the 12 by 12. Yeah, I had to think about that for a second. So it's going to slide into the pocket. It doesn't have to be quite this big but like so. <clears throat> I've got everything inked. A little tricky because it's so deep. Okay, looks good. Get off my extra. Okay, and then I created an insert that is six and three quarters by seven. Six and three quarters by seven. It's gonna go right in there. This is from the 12 by 12, and this is from the 8 by 8. So that's going to go right in there, and I like the way that looks. Now we're going to add this half circle with a curved piece. There we go. It's kind of cool, huh? I like it. So we've got this nice pocket. And then uh, in a minute, I'm going to come back and we're going to do page five. 
and I'll give you the measurements for page five in just a minute. I don't have the B-sides planned out yet, so it'll be just a moment. I'll be right back. And we'll finish page five. I'm going to release page four and five as a single video. So, and of course you can put a lot more inserts in here. That's just uh, to get you started. And I like the color combination. I'll be back in a minute. Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page five. Okay, so I did a couple of interesting things here that I want to share with you. So let me pull back in. Here's page four. And so you can see how we split these apart. So now I've got this over here on page five. And then um, once I had this cut, I traced this out. And then I traced out the back and hand cut these. So that's there. So when I when I cut this piece, I preserved this. This came from an 8x8, eight eight, and it is going to go on the inside of this flap. So I just kind of want to share with you, we basically have one curve, and I used that curve as a pattern to create the other curves. So this just was one piece, and now it's split apart, and it's going to become the back side of this one. And then the second half of this curve is on page four. So it kind of unifies the whole thing. This is also from the 8x8 collection. So the owl itself is from the 12x12. 12 12. This is from the 8x8, and so is the red piece. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Set aside my papers real quick, and we're going to add our flaps. So the first flap is going to be this curved flap. And let me tell you, I started with six and a half by eight. So I started with six and a half by eight, and then I trimmed in this, this curve. I came uh, from the zero point to four here. So you've got four inches here and here. And that's how I came up with this size. And then I just drew a curve. And the way I drew a curve is, I'll show you in, I mean, it's not very, very technical. I just put the end of something in my ruler and just went like this and created a curve. So no special tool required. As long as you've got a ruler that's got a hole in one end, you can do it. Okay, let's go through right here. straightforward page. It's a little tedious because of the curve, you know, and ha hand cutting a few pieces, but that's eh, not that big of a deal. Okay, now the second flap is five and one eighth by eight. Five and one eighth by eight. You're going to score half inch on the five and one eighth inch side. <clears throat> There we go. This is what's going to go here, but we need to figure out where our magnet's going to go. So I'm just going to draw a reference line. We know our magnet needs to be inside there somewhere. So I'm going to put it about right there. Kind of a rainy day here in San Diego. I kind of like it. When it's rainy, I don't feel one bit guilty about crafting all day long if I want to. If I feel especially creative. Oh, gosh, my arthritis. Oh, my hands are getting all old and crooked. What do you do? Okay, there we go. And just burnishing that all into place. So this is going to go right here. Looks like it's ready. I have to make sure I hit my record. I did. For some reason I was panicked about that. It's happened before. The other night I was recording page one. I think it was 
no, it was page three. And when I stood up to look at the recording, there was a, the screen was kind of fuzzy and there was a little note that said your power's low, it wasn't plugged in. I was like, oh my gosh, did I do the whole thing? And it, it's been not recording. <laughs> But I was fortunate. There was a message there, but it had it had lasted long enough to record uh, the whole page. So I was I was pretty happy about that. But I'm taking no chances today, and it's plugged in. <laughs> okay. So if you're new to the channel. Um, you may or may not know that we have um, an online store called Scrap and Create, same as the channel. And uh, everything you see here in the projects we sell uh, online, uh, the, the paper to make the project. Um, all of our tutorials are free and they'll remain online indefinitely unless, unless uh, YouTube changes their policy. So if you start a project with us, you'll always be able to finish it. And um, there's probably, I have to say, there's probably 120 finished projects. Um, those projects started about four years ago. Some of the paper you can't get anymore, but the way I do um, my tutorials is I always do the interactive elements first. Um, so then if you don't want to decorate it the same, you just install the interactive elements and use whatever paper you want. So they're still useful even if the paper's not available. And also, new, as of this year, we will be selling my finished projects um, over in our shop, which we had not before. So uh, if you don't feel like jumping in and giving it a shot, or you're in a pinch to get a project out quickly, take a look at... Um, Daphne's mini albums, I think, or mini albums by Daphne. It's like that. It's on our shop page. Um, we've got 16 finished projects. This would make 17 available to purchase. And um, there's a link uh, to the walkthrough tutor the walkthrough of the project, so you can see from a detailed perspective what it looks like before you purchase. So yeah, so that's new. I used to try to sell them in person. Um, but honestly, I don't like doing, putting the wear and tear on them to cart them around. So, and it's kind of a unique thing. Um, other crafters see the value because they know how much paper costs, but it's not for everybody, if you, if you get my drift. So anyways, um, they're out there and uh, you're more than welcome to take a look around. And that is on our website. And that's also the place where if you have a, a special request or um, a project that you'd like to see, um, send us a little note there and we'll be, we'll do our best to try to accommodate you. Okay, so there we go. There's the front, there's the inside, so far so good. This is gonna go to the center and I don't think I trimmed it, nope. And again, this is from the uh, eight by eight. Sorry, I'm banging into my desk drawer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off so we have a nice border. We'll ink it, and then um, we'll do this side, which is going to be a little bit interesting because we have to make a couple of decisions. <clears throat> I'm terrible at this. I always go back and forth. I like both sides. I think I prefer this, which is what I chose originally. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull in, 
what we had originally trimmed off here. So I, I don't really like the way this looks. I like it this way because then when you close it, it kind of has that same curve. It's really preference. Now I'm going to color block this page, but I wanted to have a little black border here. And rather than try to cut the background to match this angle, I just created a little backdrop for this that I'm going to glue. So I'm going to glue it straight down. You can also make this a pocket if you want. I'm not going to. Huh. I say that. I, I didn't trim it out as a pocket. We could make it a pocket if we want. Oops, that's too, too much. Okay, so that's going to go right here. This is going to be the backdrop. I don't have a single piece that's long enough, so I'm going to color block these to this. And I don't want it centered. I want it a little bit off. and I just think it's going to make it more interesting to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Because this, the second piece will lay on top of it. Was just making sure they're all the same scale. This came on the 12 by 12 and the 8 by 8. Mm, is that right? I think so. Or the 12 by 12 and the A4, I think. Okay, now this is just going to be trying to fit. <clears throat> They don't match perfectly, but it looks pretty good. That's a much better match. Okay, I'm going to use my pencil to mark it and trim it. As always, the material list for the project is in the description. Uh, in the description, it'll start with a little bit of information, and then if you click on Show More, you will see the material list, and that is the raw material that went into this. It's focused primarily on the designer paper used, um, but it also outlines some of the staples I use, like the glue, tape, etc. And then that is followed, keep scrolling, that's followed by the cut list for this. Now the cut list that I'm going to provide for this is going to, is going to provide the rectangular version of this with some instructions on how far to come in before you cre create your curve. Okay, so here's the piece that's going to go right here. And this is where if we wanted to make it a pocket, we would just glue the three sides and leave this slot open. I'm not happy with how wide that border is, so I'm going to show you a trick that I've developed. And I think some of you have already seen it. And it's how I free cut um, a nice border. So take an embossing tool and trace. I should put it on top of something soft. This is not the one I want, actually. I think this is the one I want because it's just the right size for me. I like a 16th inch border. So I'm tracing, embossing, tracing the edge of the red on top of the black. And it's going to create uh, an indentation that I can follow when I free cut. And I'll try to show it to you. I don't know if it's showing up, but you can see, yeah, you can. You can see where it's created this indentation, where it's been embossed down. Now I can follow that freehand and make this closer. I was going to see if I can find my scissors. So when I'm trimming it now, I'm going to try to hold it in the light just right 
so I can see that line. And I'm cutting on the outside of that embossing line. You may not be able to see it, but I'm holding it so I can see it in my light. And this works for any shape that you trace. You get a deeper embossed line uh, if you use foam behind it, but you can still see it even if you trace it just on your regular mat. Now, it doesn't show up that well, but now see how much nicer that looks? It was a little too fat right there. So it's pretty easy. Um, it's a great little cheat. And works, works like a charm. Most um, nesting dies um, have a quarter inch, um, which would make it an eighth inch border, and I like a sixteenth. So it's never quite small enough for me. So I had to learn. I had to figure out a way to make that easier for me because I do so much of it. I, I try to put some black cardstock behind everything for one reason it makes it more rigid the other reason is it sort of pops it really makes a distinct change between the two patterns and I like that so I said I wasn't going to make it a pocket and now I'm changing my mind so I'm going to just put glue normally these would be flanges but um, I'm just going to make it a flat flat pocket that goes straight down. And you can do this on any pocket. You don't have to have a flange. The value of a flange is then you get the full length of the pocket. Now in this case, when I lay it down and the glue expands, it's gonna wind up taking, you know, a little bit of space top and bottom. And that sometimes is a good thing and sometimes isn't. There we go. That looks good. I've got a little bubble in there. <clears throat> Came up a little high on this side. So I'm just going to run a black marker. and cover up the gray. There we go, there's always a solution, always a fix. Okay, so let's make a small, let's make a small insert here. Let me get one of my scraps. So it has to be narrower than four inches. So this is uh, probably, so that's four, four by seven. And I don't know how I'm gonna decorate it yet, but it's gonna go in just like that. So I'm gonna take a quick break, go get lunch ready for my husband and I, and I'll come back and we'll cover that last insert. So I hope you guys like this page. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Even, even though it wasn't difficult visually, it's impressive. Okay, I'll be back soon, guys. All right, everyone, uh, I'm back and I finished up uh, page five. So the only thing that was outstanding uh, on page five was the insert for the pocket. And this came from the 12 by 12 paper pad. And it's going to slide right in here. And you'll notice if you do not create the pocket gusset, if you just glue it straight down, they're always a little bit uh, more snug uh, because it's flat. There's, you know, no lift at all to the pocket. So it'll be nice and snug. I mean, it'll still fit in there, but it'll be much t uh, tighter. In fact, when you're doing um, a side pocket, sometimes that's a better idea because, um, if you have a loose pocket, it's very easy for things to fall out when your book is standing on end. Okay, that's it. So again, page four and page five. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'll be back shortly with page six.